Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about compass calibration on the Royal Enfield Himalayan. Stay tuned. I understand obviously from the comments and the questions that this can be quite an issue for some people. For me personally it's never really been anything I've had to worry about. When I initially bought the bike obviously I had to calibrate the compass and then maybe two or three times since then and only ever when I disconnect the battery or I'm working on the bike for whatever reason. But in all honesty, it tends to sort itself out without me even need to calibrate it. But anyway, we'll go through that process and show you how it can be done. If we look at the dash on the Himalayan guys, one of the little sort of quirky features it's got is this little sort of digital compass here. And when we initially turn the engine on, you'll see that it sort of calibrates itself essentially. But sometimes it loses direction. And when that happens, it will flash up with the little CA Whilst I don't often need to calibrate the compass on the bike here, quite often I find myself having to calibrate the compass on my GPS or on my phone. And you know, it'll tell me to rotate it on or move it on two axes. I find just moving it in a little figure of eight is the easiest way to do it. Every time I use my drone now, this rather colourful looking drone it's usually matte grey, but I keep losing it in fields, so I put loads of sticky tape on it to make it easier for me to spot it. But anyway, every time I turn my drone on, before I fly it, then I'm going to need to calibrate it. So when I'm calibrating the compass, it tells me to rotate it in one direction and then rotate it, you know, in another axis. And that whole process takes no more than 20 seconds, but of course it's worth it. So folks, needless to say, the Himalayan compass is no different from any other digital compass in that occasionally it's going to need to be recalibrated because of metal or different things. Now, there's a couple of methods to do that. You can get yourself a little fine magnet. Now, this one's a little bit too thin. Yeah, it's not strong enough. You get a magnet on the end of a screwdriver and just rotate it behind the compass here and that'll reset this. My preferred method is just to ride in a figure of eight. Now, at its most basic, folks, if you're doing a U-turn or you're doing a figure of eight, now, now, I know that I'm teaching most people to suck eggs, but again, here in the UK, before we make, make any kind of manoeuvre, then you're going to do a lifesaver check just to make sure that you're not going to get wiped out by anything before you make that move. So you do your lifesaver check and then you're going to look. And the idea is to look in the direction you want the bike to go in. Yeah, Where the head goes, the bike will follow, essentially. Or where your eye goes, your bike will follow. It's like um, if you're trying to manoeuvre around something in a hurry a cone or a rock or whatever it happens to be if you look at that object you're gonna hit it <laughs> okay you need to look past where you want the bike to go now when you're doing your figure of eight folks it needs to be relatively tight but you don't need to be turning on a dime here we're not talking about lots of counter lean and stuff like that you can if you want to but what I would essentially do is choose maybe a car park with four parking spaces and aim to stay within that I can't really do that in this car park because there's walkways in the middle here but the point is you don't want it to be the width of the entire car park yeah otherwise this doesn't <laughs> it's never gonna calibrate You also don't want to be doing it too near or too close to lots of metal objects because remember this needs to pick up true north and when you're moving through that figure of eight the compass finds the sort of strongest point essentially of course that's north and then that's how it calibrates itself but metal as we know can interfere with these things. Now, I always find it best to do these types of things in an area like this where there's plenty of space and there's, there's no traffic around. But maybe you want to find an area where there's obstacles or maybe even some cones. 